Few, less than 10 years ago of expansion, redistribution in many countries. In the midst of 2015, there's been a restructuring in the political and economic term. And there have been many tools that have been to the service of this proposal, which is, which is the fight against corruption that has just been masked as such to get out the people who, who had made it possible to have the progressive governments that we had had. What has this meant? What are the, the use of these tools? It has been to bend the will of the people that has been processed in polls. And they also have legislative and judicial power to use them as hanging instruments. And this was to replace the coup d'etat, the military coup d'etat previously. Lawfare, this is what we're going to be speaking today. We're going to be analyzing analysts, information. Thank you for being with us. As I was saying, let's see the news. This is what we always do. The past, last week, uh, through Intercept News Media, um, a file of a recording between Moro and uh, who is the, is the Minister of Justice, Sergio Moro, and the previous prosecutor and others, a recording was filtered, which uh, leaves it, makes it evident that the, the suit was, was not clear, was not clean. And and did not let Lula da Silva participate in the upcoming elections. It was October 2018. In that sense, Moro last week went to the, gave testimony on what he's accused. People against the favor of the establishment have said that they're not real, that that, that, that recording is not real. And then, and the people who were involved keep on con contradicting themselves once and again. They say that they have been victims of hackers that have bent, that have filtered, that have masked the, the recording. However, they did not turn in their cell phones. Some say that those dialogues have never had taken place. In fact, uh, I'm here to give declarations. Obviously, there's nothing to hide. The idea is to come spontaneously to clear everything around the sensationalism around these news. As I said, even if I don't recognize that the authentic authenticity of these messages, oh, they cannot be partially or totally uh, ma masked, many people have Many just heard from the, the media, and I am against the unethical treatment. June 14th, just a couple of days before uh, Moro went to the went before Parliament, this this American news media intercept is what it said. This, Lula said, the story published by Intercept about the communication filtered between Moro and the members of the Lavajato work group has already been said by me many times before, but the Tolio, uh, it was said also by Sanin, one, another one of my lawyers, everybody defended me. I, uh, I now take advantage to say that I am happy. I want to say that I am happy because the country will finally know the truth. I always said that Moro was a liar. He's a lawyer when he testified for the first time, and that's registered. I said that he's condemned to condemn me because the lying went too far. I think that the mask will fall. I don't know what will happen, but let me say that at this moment, I am much more at peace. I am much more at peace in Nagolo or Moro, much more than any judge in this country, because my tranquility is that of a person who knows himself to be honest. God knows I'm honest. I know I'm honest. Moro knows I'm honest. 
And at the same time, they know that they are lying. That's why I'm tranquil. What do I expect? I expect that justice be done in this country. Some are asking them about what is this of judicialization of, of justice, or is this a politicization of justice? This is what we're going to analyze with our guests. Lawfare is the unethical use of judicial system to bend uh, political perceptions. And by using apparently legal tools, they pressure the victim and their family. And what they try to seek is to lose public support and not have reaction. This is a definition that we found in the CELAC in an article called Lawfare Judicialization of Justice, done by Camila Bolenweiler. Let's go to the map and locate why there are several cases of judicialization of justice, especially in a triangle of countries of our, of our continent. And this triad is, by, is conformed by Brazil, Ecuador, and Argentina. If we draw a, an imaginary line between three, three countries, we can make a, a triangle. This is how we see them in the regional geography. The three were key. Here we are. In the map, Ecuador, Brazil, and Argentina were key in the integration of a big country that, be, that started and led by Hugo Chavez and also supported by Bolivia. And if we see a bit further, we can include Venezuela and even reach Nicaragua and Central America. So they were a wall against the hegemony of the U.S. who tried to get resources from these countries. And now we have uh, new, new stories with right-wing governments. Let's not forget that Ecuador, it's a small country, but my mega diverse and OPEP. Argentina with important industries and soy. And Brazil, it's the biggest one in the region with coasts in the Atlantic Ocean. He's the one, he's the biggest, biggest bricks in the region. He's got Amazon Basin near Venezuela because they've got a wide border. This is just to give you a, a bit of information. Now I want to go to the ALBA, who says, judicialization of, of justice. This is done by Miguel Ángel Azugaray, politician of, Cam of Cuba. In a government governed by the right is in existence of the possibility to maintain the domination. In this new dynamic, the news media at the at the use of the right, use investigations that are later used by prosecutors and judges. Judges themselves have accepted the influence that they feel on the news media because they already have a popular opinion that already determined who's innocent and who's guilty. I recommend uh, to read this article to read it in an extent. Let's see. We also let's see to another epicenter of this critical moves. So let's go to Rio de Janeiro. We have André Vieira there. Hi, André. Greetings to everybody in Venezuela. These revelations about the about the judicial system reveal not only something that's going on here in Brazil, but in Latin America as a whole, because Intercept revealed that the former judge Lavallato and the people of the Minister of Justice that were that had been the culprit of condemning Lula da Silva, Lula Silva, which would be illegitimate, illegitimate and illegal. And they reveal what many social movements had already denounced, that Lava Jato 
eh, buscar, que was just a small screen to remove, del de los remove the Primero Workers' Party from the party, de from the Marcel, government. First by throwing out the Ilmar Rousseff uh, for many things that were not proven. And now not to let Lula participate in the next elections. Contra Lula da Silva, que retirou Lula da Silva de la disputa eleitoral, e custou Lula, que era o principal candidato. E, let's bear in mind that he was the, the heading, the head, he was heading the polls. And then Jair Bolsonaro won. The former judge, uh, Moro, accepted uh, the post of Minister of Justice. Who was de Lula da Silva de esa disputa electoral. Pero and Bolsonaro, let, he was the main beneficiary no of Lula not participating in the elections. This also reveals how the justice in the region, how, how it is operated. Let's remember what happened in Peru that uh, took Alan Garcia to commit suicide. Here in Brazil, there was also an action of, of justice that took a, the head of a, of a university here to commit suicide. So this is how justice operates in a political manner. And they try to seek, along with media, a scandal to benefit some groups, some political groups. And this is a a right-wing action. We should also remember that the same justice, according to critics, also have been moved in Ecuador in the case of Jorge Glass and the prosecution against Rafael Correa, former president of this country, and also in Argentina with the former president, Cristina Kirchner. So now they say that there is a new Condor operation in the region. But, the, but it is now it's going to be not led by the military, by, but the justice. Here in Brazil, with these publications of The Intercept, it is proven that the justice is being used in a political way to benefit a group. And in this case, it's the extreme right led by Bolsonaro. And the justice would be acting against the left that was mainly represented by the workers' movement and Dula da Silva and Dilma Rousseff. So we must keep our eyes open because, because everything that has been presented in Brazil also say that there might be a relationship with what might be happening in other countries. To go against to against the left. So please, let's be alert with everything that's going on. Thank you very much, André, for all your positions. Important to ask ourselves, who is this man, Sergio Moro, that now speaks about sensualism, but in the midst of this thing, he himself uh, revealed a conversation between Dilma and, and Lula. And back then he said, let's forget the illegal capture, let's just focus on the content of the dialogue. And now what happens? Sergio Fernando Moro, he's former judge and now Minister of Security. He was federal judge of the Third Circuit of Curitiba, responsible of the task force of Lava Jato, case in, formed in 2014, and the cases of these in the first instance. He's a former judge that condemned Eduardo Cuna, ex-president of the Camera of, of the Senate, who was promoter of who, of who put down Dilma Rousseff and then was condemned for corruption and money laundering. Moro also has uh, condemned two other people that were originally members of the Dusself Lula, Lula Silva's cabinet. He spent nine years and a half for corruption and money laundering 
uh, to Lula da Silva. Lula always rejected the, the claims and never accepted any, any mis misdoing. He was given a, a total of 12 years and then reduced to eight years. The case did not le let Lula participate in the presidential campaign of 2018 in which Jair Bolsonaro was elected and invited the former judge to be his Minister of Justice. This June 19, he went forth to the General, to General Assembly to explain about the conversations presented by Intercept, which revealed that he had gone to had met with the prosecutors. In this context, we have to ask ourselves if lawfare is one of the strategies of the power to avoid new actors to dispute this power. And let's go always back to see what happened and what might happen. This is what we're going to be asking our guests. First pause, we'll be right back. Lula, he is not just a political prisoner. He is not just a, an innocent man under justice. He represents the possibility of re reincarnation of the revolt of the Brazilian people. He represents the Latin American effort to break the historical inequality. He represents us. Now, all of the popular leadership are being threatened by a legal strategy. Uh, you can easily understand what she said. The lawfare in Latin America. This is what we're analyzing today in critical moves. This has been proven that many, with many tools, these left governments have proven that uh, it is possible to end with misery and hunger, that you can construct a diplomacy of sol solidarity with many other countries with respect and mutual benefit. That is what Lula did. That's why his popularity kept on growing. Here we see the, the reasons why we understand. Lula represents a, a new way of governing a country based on redistribution of wealth and, and to the outside with a diplomacy that's respectful against with again, along with Argentina and Venezuela they had an integration system it was solidarity of these people the main fuel of their policies he promoted UNASUR and he was fundamental in BRICS, who was trying to defy the bipolar world. He was never a, a, a son of the establishment. They respect him while he was in power, but that alleged friendship changed when things when there was new oil findings and they could see that they could have a, a role in defining the prices this is along with this many people left poverty 
thanks to his plan of family force. And he tried to elevate the minimum wage is 62 percent. His second mandate ended with 70 percent of approval. He gave the power to Dilma, who was there. Who, there, there was a coup. And so Wright could have a better grain playing ground. What they did was Lula was put into corruption cases. And this was proven by the intercept issued up recordings. Of course, this, this was trying to destroy the integration of the region, where Lula represented years of progress of the region. This was led by many of the Latin American countries. Let's see what our analysts say. Uh, we have two of them from Rio de Janeiro. One is Giselle Ricobon, lawyer and law professor. And Vanessa Martina Silva, she's a journalist. Thank you both for being with us. Giselle, judicialization of policies what is this what is your opinion on the conceptualization of this well, thank you very much for calling me it's always a pleasure to be with you well I think this is a very important topic for all of Latin America and it's a world phenomenon in 21st century we're seeing a increasing power of the judicial power and more over than the other powers like the presidential or legislative so it's a phenomenon where some authors have said it's a real power they can dominate can dominate all the future of democracy. So one thing is the balance between the powers, where you have parts and counterparts, which is part of any democracy. But when that balance doesn't have a, a correct balance, it can go to author authoritarianism, and this is what we see now. It's a total domination of the judicial system, and what they do is they can guide the future of the country. So it is a politicization of the judicial branch. And it interferes in the dem democratic game. Thank you, Giselle. Let's go to Vanessa. Vanessa, we see uh, the recordings from Intercept. Uh, can you give us your opinion on on this recent events? We've seen that they try to do damage control because allegedly what they say is that there have been hackers and uh, that it's even worse than the, the coup. How do you see it? Sí, perfectamente. Bueno, primero que nada, well, first nada, of all, por la thank you for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to speak, to speak with Telesur to this network that Bien, is so important for the continent. What we see is that once again, there is this successful tactic that was used during the elections, that what they do is they invent lies, they're, and what they do is they put it and as headlines. They start with Twitter, and they create like a chain 
And this starts to create a situation that later they, they go to the news media that they themselves have created. And it finally reaches the international news media. And this version, which is a, it's just a hacker or a filtration, illegal filtration, what we have to see is in first place that Intercept, which is an alternative news outlet, never spoke of hackers. We don't know. And the experts in communication are debating that it could not have been a hacker because the volume that they have is very high. So it's more probable that, that great companies of filtration were doing it. So somebody just filtered it to somebody else, but there is no hacker involved. It is not an illegal filtering. But who really cares? Because they change. Sergio Moro was yesterday in the Senate speaking terrible things, uh, including about Eduardo Bolsonaro, speaking of other lies, uh, without no fun fundaments. Like, for example, uh, he was speaking about a journalist who's the same author of the Snowden case, they say that, that he had bought the chair of David Miranda in the parliament. So Miranda is a congressman and he took over it after that the legitimate legitimate person there had to leave because he was threatened, uh, his life was threatened. So we've got paramilitary people that are probably involved in all of this. And of course they are very close to the Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro family. So on top of the lies they invent, these lies have repercussion and now threaten the lives of David Miranda. So we have a big risk that we might not find out what are the real facts, what are the real things, because we don't know them yet. So we are at the risk of not finding out the complete material because they are at the risk of dying. It could be at the hands of the, the same people who did it against Mariela Franco. So, uh, once again, yes, we see here the, the information of uh, the threats against the, these journalists who reveal information. Let's go back to Giselle. Giselle, if we try to, to join these three countries with an imaginary line, these countries where these cases happen, Ecuador, Brazil and Argentina, fundamentally, we can form a triangle of mega diverse countries, resourceful in raw materials, and that they're key in, in making an alternative type of alliance, of a geopolitical that began to to build itself in expansion. Let's see this geopolitical outlook. Uh, yeah, so, allegedly, yes, supposedly. What we see is that the right could not win the elections without a, a, dirty, a dirty strategy. With it, without using political war, there would be no possibility of the right, of the extreme right now in Brazil, because the popular government of Dilma and Lula had gained a lot of power. Lula, even while he was imprisoned, 
he was on top of all of the polls. So I don't think that, I think that the, it's a strategy of the economic power that is looking at our natural resources, that is, that knows about the toxic things in our food. And everything, all of the progress that we had, and if there's not a trick, if there's not a trick to get them out of the elections, the right would not be able to win. It's important that the left is clear on this. Sergio Moro was the man who allowed Bolsonaro to win the elections in Brazil. That's why Bolsonaro has Moro as the Minister of Justice. Because let's not forget that Lula was leading the polls. That is a total truth. Everybody who condemned, uh, who condemned the Lula's government is now a minister. And this is not a clear democracy. Now that everything's on the table, everything that has been proven through intercept, if he, if he believes in democracy, what he should do is leave so that there can be an in autonomous and independent investigation. So, it is not normal what he did. Yesterday we saw an organization of judges that, that they don't share, that they don't share that posture and that they don't agree with it and that does not guarantee the minimum rights of people. So I think that Brazil is the example of how they can use uh, the judicial branch in a one-sided way to protect and to help other people. This is not illicit. So they, they're putting Bolsonaro on the spot. Yes, in fact, the Bolsonaro government, somebody who had never been in a debate, a political debate, and uh, that's so intolerant, he's homophobic, he's violent, somebody of an extreme right, somebody doesn't have the minimum principles of society. How could he win the elections of a country that's so diverse, of Brazil? So there had to be, everything had to be well structured by the powers. Lula was, was in prison, he had no voice, he could not give interviews. He could not even go see his brother that was dying. What they did to Lula was awful. We have, also, we have always condemned the first instance on what Moro said because there was no evidence to be condemned. There was no money, there was no accounts, there was nothing that they found in his, in his power. We already knew it was a trick, it was a trap. If it wasn't for that trap, Lula would be president of Brazil as we're speaking. And on the contrary, we have people who keep on lying. Yesterday they spoke many lies because it should be an impossible, impartial system. Because we're speaking of, of uh, people who are le losing their liberty, and this is, a, this is important for every person. And according to international law, anybody should be judged by an independent jury. And this was not the case. And this is a, this is a judgment where it was totally partialized. Of course, they wanted to condemn Lula for anything, anything that was possible. 
Gracias, Giselle. En esta Thank you, Giselle. Política, Vanessa, Let's eh, go to Vanessa. Let's see if they also want to dismantle and immobilize the complementary mechanisms that have been created, for example, UNASUR. Yes, totally. We were living in the growth of integration. We had many mechanisms to strengthen, uh, like Mercosur and with Bolivia and Venezuela incorporating into it. We had CELAC, UNASUR, to declare our region as peace. And, and what they've done with all of this is is to divide the countries, like the Grupo de Lima. And now South America is divided. So when we had governments that were progressive, what we had is we were adding, we were adding more countries to, have, to be stronger, to do business, to set forth the cultural changes. And what happened later? That there's a rivalry and there's a fragmentation based on ideology and political. So like Grupo de Lima, which is a left group, uh, is it, as it fight with Bolivia and Venezuela that are countries that are still on the progressive advancement. So of course, this is a strategy uh, that just like the Condor operation, it's, an, it's a Condor operation, it's a re-edition of it, uh, more elaborated, because this doesn't come from inside our countries. This is the fight we have with our neighbors. So this is not something that comes from our from inside. This comes from outside. We have orders from the outside that are commanding and they're doing all of this. For example, the position of Lenin Moreno is not casual. All of the persecution against Cristina, Cristina Kirchner is not a coincidence either. So they're revealing things that are very dubious. So when we see that Sergio Moro is always going to the U.S. and he has a strong vinculation to the intelligence service of the United States. It, this is what we have to think is, what are we doing with our countries? It's important. What's going with the news media? It's fundamental. It's because when Intercept brings all of this to light, these, these recordings that Sergio Moro had with uh, the prosecutor, when this is revealed, we already had many indications that something was going wrong, that there was an orchestrated offense against Lula, and that it wasn't fair. And it wasn't coincidental. So yesterday we found out that that there was that there was a investigation of Cardoso. However, uh, Judge Moro said that uh, it's not interesting, and because of course they aren't interested in investigating somebody who is an ally of them. So, everybody who started, the person who also instigated uh, against Dilma is not investigated either. They have never doubted. They have never asked themselves what is going on. Why? Because, of course, it's part of the plan. It's part of this articulation that I also believe that comes from the outside. 
uh, we see that the same thing happened in the other countries. Uh, the media war against Cuba, against Bolivia, uh, for this referendum of Evo. And there was this, uh, they said that there was a son. That was never true. So then the results of the elections are changed. And then they said, no, it wasn't true. And this is what we're seeing, along with the, the, the aspect of rights. Uh, yesterday we saw a news program that is something like more of entertainment. We saw fake news that they spoke about, about the purchase of the chair of the parliament on behalf of David Miranda. This is what we see on TV. And nothing happens. There's no sanction for this. How can it be that somebody that shares something, it's, it's different than somebody as a journalist that has paid a lot of money to be able to uh, convey truth. But the thing is that nothing happens. In Brazil, we don't have a democracy. We don't have our institutions that are fully capable where we could uh, we could place our statements or we could put our claims. Moro is the Minister of Justice. Is this an evidence that there is a, a very weak democracy? Thank you very much for your reflections. See you next time. They have been very kind to connect from us from Rio de Janeiro. As we see, there are many cases. If we see the political timing, they coincide. Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, former president of Brazil in 2015, without any, with any proof, she was condemned for the assassination of Kisman, of, uh, of um, Alberto Nisman, of a journalist. Then there was another case in 2018. Uh, there was a, a case against her notebooks. Dilma Rousseff, 2009, she began the operation Lava Jato as a tool to, do, to make her lose her prestige, especially against Lula. In 2014, in the midst of the electoral campaign for the re-election, she was accused for corruption. Three days before the second, the second round of elections, a magazine, Bejar, said that she and Lula knew of the of Petrobras case. In 2015, congressmen began an impeachment that finished in 31, uh, August 31st, 2016, that imposed Michel Temer as the president for the rest of the period. What she said is that they, what they said is that they had, she had violated fiscal rules. However, others are the ones that are involved in, in corruption. Number three, Luis Ignacio Dule de Silva, former president of Brazil and leader of the Workers' Party. On July 12, 2017, he was, he was condemned to serve nine years and a half of prison because he allegedly received an apartment uh, as bribing. However, uh, this was just a... Uh, this was proven by an, a news a news article, but not in 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 papers. Uh, then in 2018, uh, his, it was ratified his his condemnment. It was increased to 12 years and, and one month. Obviously, this let him out, left him out of the elections. However, it was never proven he had an illegitimate department or any account. The, the evidence was not sufficient, but on April 7th, he was incarcerated with the press in the, in the door of his house. And September 1st, the electoral tribunal impeded him to 
participate in the October polls. Next case, Rafael Correa, 2018. Justice gave him a, a sanction of having to present himself to the Supreme Court due to a alleged, alleged uh, kidnapping of Valda. Rafael Correa rejects this measure because he lives in Belgium with his family. After that, they, he was ordered of prison preventive prison to the president. Something important about the Valda case is that you cannot judge somebody in two places, because before he had been judged in Colombia, and now they want to do it in Ecuador. So there's been a regionalization of these strategies. And what they do is they use it as uh, the fight against corruption, which is never proven. Let's go to our last pause. We'll be right back. Lawfare in Latin America is it a tool to finish, to end up the geopolitical tendency of a region. In our last minutes, we will have Edson Bayara. He's a coordinator of the landless movement in Brazil. Thank you for being here. Is this a more frequent strategy in Latin America? Yes, there's a dispute for the richness, uh, and to control this, they need to control governments. So if it's a progressive government, if they have national development strategies, be these state or private, if they had programs of, of national progress, something to end uh, extreme poverty, hunger, uh, technological development, a, a group of elements. And of course, we need uh, we need income to finance all of this. Well, the U.S. empire needs all of these countries to maintain themselves. And do you think the U.S. is behind this mega operation La Vallato? There is no doubt. In the case of Brazil specifically, they were the one who made more than 60 companies, and among those Odebrecht, that had capacity of technological development, and there was civil engineering. So, if we have a capital, a private or a public, and a capacity of technological development, of work, all of these companies were dismantled. And in their place, uh, there are American, American companies, like in the case of petroleum, were selling 75% of the richness now it's all in hands of multinational companies. Is there any way to stop this? Or has it gone too far? Well, it has gone too far. But I think that countries are waking up. It's too much lies. And it, the lies only has a date of expiration, too. So before it was harder, because there was not so many communication networks. But now communication is very fast. So, in, in the year 64, there was the same structure. We had to wait like 30 years to have a new type of government. Now, in six months of six months of Bolsonaro's period, things are everything. Everything's clear, like clear water, and we can see that North America is behind everything and that financed a judicial change. And the other, on the other side, 
todos los dirigentes políticos they are coordinating de, 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 de progressista y también los empresarios they are coordinating with, 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 with the CEOs so after what you said after what you've seen what do you think is the destiny of Sergio Moro. Do you think it's hard that something could happen? That he would quit, that he would go to jail? He's got a strategy, uh, a power strategy. He's, uh, he's not going to quit. He'll probably, he'll probably try to stay there because that's his project. Pro uh, Bolsonaro is, he's just a piece inside this project and they're being financed from outside. And what they have to do is stay there. So there's still not, there's not even that Lula, who still is strong internally, and there's not a, there's not a, it's not so clear that Sergio Moro will have to leave. Uh, all the time there are more elements, more evidence. Latino-Americana, Brasileña, eh, Internacional también, vea cada vez más claro que it's, fue un it's clear para evitar que that it was just a hoax. So Lula could not take over the government once again. So I guess this uh, has to do with the regional policy. It's a dispute. There are two blocks in dispute. There's no doubt that there's a dispute. But there are reactions of the people everywhere. Our victory in Mexico. I thought that in Argentina there are clear signals. Bolsonaro is not doing well in the surveys. Moro is starting to fall because they see that people are on the streets. And everything indicates that there could be a change in these days. So there are signals. And yes, this is a month of elections. Same thing in Venezuela. This visit of Michelle Bachelet to visit Venezuela. And she was avoiding to do so. But now that she's here, it's a recognition, it's a signal of recognition to the government. And it's a signal that things are changing. Let's see, like for example, in Colombia, the money was stolen and it was said to be for humanitarian help. Well, we're gaining strength. And when we lost the elections in Brazil, we had to stop and evaluate to see what's going on. It's not a moment of just going out like crazy people. We have to. Well, there's a, this is on based on the ineffective right that is trying to throw it all on the left. And of course, yes, what they do is they have a, a lot of corruption. And yes, we know that corruption is a problem in many countries. But the capital, capitalist system is corrupt by nature because they have to exploit the other other one to take advantage. So it's not that we're the only ones in corruption. For example, the people that are once again are trying, are, are stealing. In university, they're closing courses because they don't have the money, the money enough to keep the university running. There's a high corruption. As if, uh, as if it was a thread that keeps on going on and on. Okay, let's go to our conclusions. Well, there are a, there's a process of legal wars against former uh, presidents of left, leftist governments and a void for them to 
to go for re-elections. So, of course, this is not an impartial war against corruption. And what they want to do is control all of the richness, both human, material, and immaterial, of our region. And we have to see the alternative geopolitical that had been going on. This is a, we're coming to an end. Thank you for sharing with us. See you soon.